the man we honor on this glorious day left a legacy of selfless service to mankind. He and his men truly served with distinction to protect and serve their fellow Americans with honor, respect, and devotion to duty. I'm uh, Stephen Rochon. I'm a retired uh, Rear Admiral, uh, U.S. Coast Guard. This weekend, I was invited to the North Carolina Aquarium to uh, speak on Richard Etheridge, a bit about his life, and uh, more so the legacy that he, he left behind. Richard Etheridge was born a slave on the Outer Banks in 1842. During the Civil War, he joined the Union Army and was promoted to the rank of sergeant. Later, he returned to the Outer Banks to serve in the life-saving service and was considered one of the best surfmen on the East Coast. In 1880, he was appointed to keeper of the Pea Island Station, the first African-American to hold the position. That station came to be manned by an all-black crew, and knowing the extra scrutiny he and his men were under, Etheridge ran his station with military discipline. During a severe storm in October of 1896, the schooner E.S. Newman ran aground just south of the station. Unable to launch their surf boat in the rough seas, the crewmen swam out to the vessel nine times to rescue everybody on board. The captain of the Newman later found the piece of the vessel bearing its name and gifted it to the station as an offering of thanks. This piece currently hangs in the station's cookhouse, which was relocated to Manteo. Stephen Rochon spearheaded the awarding of the Gold Lifesaving Medal to the Pea Island Lifesavers for that rescue, which had been unrecognized by history for 100 years. In an event to commemorate the 120th anniversary of the rescue, descendants of the Pea Island Lifesavers gathered at the historic cookhouse to meet, share stories, and learn more about their ancestors' legacy. The next day, a ceremony to rededicate Richard Etheridge's gravesite was held at the Roanoke Island Aquarium, where the grave is located. I have to admit that stumbling upon this story of P. Island changed my, my life. It changed my, my leadership style because I read so much about how Richard Etheridge ran that station with military rigor since he was once uh, a sergeant in the Civil War. And so I followed that legacy. I followed what he passed down that I was able to unearth. And I kept it in mind. And so learning from him, learning from others, but particularly always keeping that story of P. Island and Richard Etheridge uh, helped guide me and do things along the way. And lo and behold, I was uh, selected and promoted to Rear Admiral in the Coast Guard because of them. Black history is not recorded. Even some of the things not recorded way, accurate the way it should be. And some of the things get lost. We especially as black families, we don't talk about it. It's getting better now, but you don't just keep talking about it so you can pass it on to generation after generation. They're not gonna know. You don't hear these kind of stories that often especially in the African-American community. And I'm sure that there are multitude of stories like my family out there that we just don't know about. I happen to be part of one that some people know about. It's pride. It's, I don't know any other word to describe it, but pride. I'm in awe actually being here and thinking about them and what they did and the example and the legacy they left to countless men and women in the Coast Guard. So it, it's, I'm always thrilled to come back to the Outer Banks, to come back to Roanoke Island, to not just talk about them, but to feel their presence here, particularly in this cookhouse.